They dedicate their lives to saving others, but they can't always save themselves. Doctors are at a higher risk of suicide compared to other adults, and it turns out physicians frequently decline to seek treatment for their own depression. Patrick Terpstra of Newsy, it's an online and cable news network, has our report. It is the focus of this week's segment on the leading edge of science and medicine. I can remember getting the call as soon as she called and told me that he was, that he had disappeared. I think I just knew. North Carolina physician Mitchell Hardison was a popular family doctor with a secret. All of these guys are doctors in this photo. Even though they were my dad's closest friends, he wouldn't have talked about that with them. He was depressed, his daughter Anna says. The stigma around mental illness and medicine is so strong that I don't even think he would admit it to his closest friends. Honestly, I don't even really know if he admitted it to himself. Hardison killed himself three years ago. He was among medical doctors who take their own lives at a higher rate compared to the general population. A landmark 2004 Harvard study found male physicians were 40% more likely to die by suicide and female physicians were 200% more likely to take their own lives. Research shows long work days, constant sleep deprivation, a sense of guilt and a fear of showing weakness are factors. No, I am a killer. That's a fact. Anesthesiologist Alex Hellman felt like his actions contributed to a patient's death after he replaced a breathing tube. There's always a sense and a question of like, well, where's the justice in this situation? There's only one way to make, to make this situation right. And that answer was suicide. His wife stopped his suicide attempt. He thought the emotional pain was just part of the job. I got tons of education on how to prevent disasters and accidents. I had no education on what to do if and when one happens to you. In recent years, groups such as the American Medical Association have stepped up their fight against physician burnout and depression, now recommending that hospitals offer new resources like 24-7 confidential counseling. At the time, only Dr. Hardison's family knew he was sick. He was 100% positive that if he came forward and said he needed help, that there would be a reprisal of some sort. Hardison's daughter says her father had fallen victim to a medical system that he felt discouraged him from seeking psychiatric care. Hardison worried if he got treated for his depression, he'd have to disclose it when he renewed his medical license with the board. At that time, North Carolina asked whether doctors had been treated for mental issues on their application for a medical license or renewal. Since the medical board deals with your licensing, there was a fear that if you sort of admitted that you needed help, it would undermine who you were as a doctor and they would start digging into things that hadn't even been done incorrectly and that would just result in like smearing your name or losing your license or, you know, just possibilities like that that were terrifying. Catherine Gold at the University of Michigan studies doctor suicides. Her research shows that mental health questions on physician license applications keep doctors from seeking counseling while failing to actually identify unstable and unsafe doctors. Just having a mental health problem doesn't necessarily mean that there are any behavioral problems. So I think boards often conflate the two. The board's mission is very simple. It's stated in statute, basically to protect the public against people who should not be practicing medicine. Ian Marquand is executive officer of the Montana Board of Medical Examiners responsible for licensing doctors. Montana was among 38 states we found that asked doctors about their mental health when they apply for or renew a medical license. With mental health, we don't go into specifics, but we do want to make sure that our providers are stable individuals, uh, again, to prevent uh, any harm to patients. Montana's medical application asks about five years of past psychiatric history, but numbers provided by the Montana Medical Board show out of 22 applicants who reported mental diagnoses in the past three years, none ended up with any impact to their license. Why ask the question then? That may be a question for the board and our department to review. It's a similar story in other states that require disclosure. The head of Wyoming's medical board said, in my 11 years with the board, I cannot recall a single time that the board declined to license a physician or physician assistant 
on the basis of a disclosed mental health condition. There's quite widespread concern that many of these questions would not hold up if they were challenged in a court of law because they're very broad. They don't talk about current impairment. The Americans with Disabilities Act prohibits discrimination based on disability, including mental health diagnosis. State boards in Minnesota and New Jersey changed their mental health questions after doctors successfully argued that the questions were too broad and violated their rights under the ADA. Last spring, medical boards across the nation gathered in Charlotte, North Carolina to talk about this issue. So this is the nation's uh, state medical and osteopathic medical boards coming together. Alaska. Dr. Humayun Chowdhury leads the Federation Arizona. of State Medical Boards. All in favor of accepting the document. The Federation advises states on the best practices for licensing doctors. It does uh, have a lot of meaning when the nation's state medical boards um, decide to support a particular point of view on anything. The group passed 35 recommendations to promote physician wellness. Topping the list, they asked state boards to consider whether it's necessary to ask doctors about mental health at all and to ensure questions focus on current impairment, limiting them to the past two years. We found at least 21 states that ask about three or more years of mental health history. Catherine Gold hopes the report makes state boards go a step further to eliminate questions about mental health. But I tell you, as long as the states are asking physicians about mental health, you are going to have many, many physicians who don't speak up and don't get help and just get worse. After Mitchell Hardison's suicide in North Carolina, the state medical board there removed the mental health questions from physician license renewal applications. Following the federation vote, the board took the question off the initial license application as well. Honestly, I think he would be thrilled that something about his life helped somebody and horrified that the story is public. And that's almost, to me, the reason why we have to do it, because he felt like it couldn't be talked about and it shouldn't be something anybody knew. And I don't feel that way. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Patrick Terpstra from Newsy. And Newsy has much more on physician depression and suicide at newsy.com unspoken.